Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Telstra virtual event for today and to, the and to our virtual events platform. My name's Jeremy Little, and I'll be your host today. Um, for those of you new to the Telstra event, or even if you've been before onto this platform, um, there is, it's, it's an interactive platform, so we'd really love to hear from you today. There's a little uh, window down in the bottom where you can put your questions in, so please jump in there and send us your questions. So the best ones and some of the most interesting ones will be picked out, and I'll have the opportunity to, to ask them to our, ho to our guests here throughout the event. Um, so depending on what kind of platform you're on, you'll get a different user experience. You should, if you're on a, a Mac or PC, you can move the windows around. Also on a tablet, you can. You can resize them. Um, there is our speaker bios are in there as well. There's some notes that you'll be able to see, some handout notes for the, for the slides that they'll be talking to today. So if you want more information, uh, jump on there. We'll, we'll be running through the content. There's quite a lot to get through today. Now, our guests today are Eva Schaefer. She's the co-founder and managing director of C2C Online, one of the largest implementation platforms for Office 365. And we've also got Richard Matthewman, who is the subject matter expert on cloud here at Telstra in uh, Telstra Business. So, guys, welcome. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you so Hi, much for joining us. Now, we're going to jump into our first poll, and for those that uh, aren't aware of me, I'm Jeremy Little, just to say again, we're going to jump into our first poll, and then I'm going to allow our guests to give us a little bit more background information on them. So the poll that we have there, we'd love everybody online to tell us uh, what, what office package do you currently use? And we'll have about uh, 30 seconds whilst our guests introduce themselves, and then I'll jump to the results. So Richard, first, would you please tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, look, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, look, I've been at Telstra for um, nearly 18 months now, and my role was National Manager, Subject Matter Expert for Cloud. But prior to Telstra, I was with IBM for 12 years in the uh, human capital management space. So that was all about actually employee engagement with, with technology. So I feel very comfortable that um, uh, Office sort of is one of those great tools that does help that employee engagement. So it's very important that we're doing this session. Fantastic. Sounds like subject matter expert is, an, is, an, is the right title for you. And Eva, please, a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm director of C2C, and really it's more about C2C. We've, the background of the company is traditionally a consulting company. So we started in 2007 um, as a consulting company focusing on the unified communications space. Um, and then in 2010, when Micro Microsoft first introduced Office 365 to Australia, we became one of the first um, Office 365 integrators moving uh, companies to Office 365 in the cloud. Excellent. Thank you, guys. A, a wealth of knowledge that we'll try to <laughs> extract on, on the session today. So thanks again for joining us. Um, so let's jump through to the answer of this poll. So it looks like we've got 52.5% using Office 2010, 18% using Office 2007, and 27.9% using another package. So interesting results from what the poll. What was the, the largest? Office 2010. Oh, okay, 2010. great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's plenty of opportunity there to take advantage of some of the new technology. So I think the session that uh, Eva's going to have will be of great interest mm. to those users. Yeah, fantastic. I'm, Completely agree. You know, we all know cloud is the future. So, um, really interesting topic today. So, we're going to be talking about enabling the super user. Richard, you're going to run us through this. So, I'll hand it over to you. Um, please tell us a little bit about the, this super user. Well, that's great. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, look, the reason we've come up with this term super user is that we commissioned a, a survey um, sort of early this year where we surveyed uh, over 675 IT decision makers. And we wanted to test the mood of the way they were adopting technology around collaboration and uh, communication tools in their organisation. And what we found from this survey is that um, there were particular standout organisations that really had a high level of adoption compared to the ones that we've considered as ordinary organisations. And these companies that had this high level of adoption, we called them super users because we found that they were really taking advantage of the new technology. So uh, what we wanted to share today is just a little bit of the insights that we came uh, to uh, from this survey and just some of the tips that we found that might be of interest to the audience. 
Excellent. So we've got on here top 10 collaboration yes. tools. Okay, now this is one of the findings that came out. Now this is probably going to be obvious to people that, um, you know, the users, what they're looking for, particularly the super user that we found, is really the tools that they're using in their personal life they want to bring into the workforce. And this was a, a very strong driver that we found. But as we've uh, found out, the survey, uh, as you can see on the screens there, it really rated from 1 to 10, the top top 10 that they were looking for. And obviously, things number one was laptops, uh, but number two was remote access. But thirdly, it was things such as online storage and file sharing tools. And then we went into um, uh, mobile access for corporate applications, uh, following to communication tools and uni uh, unified communication systems. And then lastly, we were looking at things like instant messaging and also um, audio conferencing. So one of the interesting takeaways that we, we got from this was that um, these tools are very common, but they're very difficult to implement. And what the survey showed us was that 9 out of 10 IT leaders found it incredibly challenging to implement this technology and also get users to um, uh, get productivity benefits out of it. Mm. Now, one of the key reasons why it was challenging was that it wasn't a high priority for the IT department. There are other business drivers that were really making it um, uh, less of an importance to implement this technology to users. So that was really the primary thing. The second thing was that there was the typical lack of funding. Uh, CapEx bu budgets are really tight. Uh, the cost of the technology when you have to sort of um, purchase servers and so forth is challenging. So looking at cloud would obviously alleviate some of these areas. But also one of the other key inhibitors to um, implementing these tools was the um, lack of expertise within organisations and the lack of manpower. You know, the IT departments just didn't have the resources to really um, deliver on these tools. And so that created quite a challenge for those organisations. But the organisations that did implement it, this, you know, they had the super users, got quite a few productivity benefits out of it. Very interesting. So a few challenges there for um, these organisations. That's right. And I've just, um, you know, some of the productivity benefits that organisations are getting out of these tools is there was um, a survey that uh, Smart um, um, Salesforce actually commissioned in Britain. And uh, that was, they found that 60% of mobile users were um, getting huge productivity benefits. And the employers of those mobile users were finding that they were getting nearly 240 hours extra of productivity from those mobile users. So if you can imagine, instead of working nine to five, access to your laptop, you know, they're at home and they were able to address and answer emails, they'll be able to solve problems at their convenience without having to go back into the office. So that's really where the productivity benefits came from. And that very much is what we saw in the super user areas. But in addition to that, um, there's some interesting research which you can see on your screen at the moment that um, uh, employees, uh, for instance, I won't read them all out, but the last one I think is quite interesting, that 51% of new generation workers, and this is really aged between 21 and 32, um, would contravene any policies about bringing um, uh, their own smartphones to work and also use the smartphones in work. So that really means that this new generation of, of user, they really will, don't really care what the company's saying in terms of policies. They want to use their smartphone regardless of the, of the security risks uh, that, that brings to the organisation. Hmm. So they're more likely to use the technology that they've got and if you can provide something for them to use on that technology then they're going to be... Well you're going to be ahead of, ahead of the game basically, yeah. yeah. So the idea is instead of going against the flow of um, people using um, these personal items, uh, personal apps themselves, you should encourage it, but do it in a way that conforms to your security policies mm. and also leverage the enthusiasm that the workers are bringing to the organisation through wanting to use these collaboration tools. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're living in the age of the millennials and digital natives coming into the workplace, that's so, right? That's so true, that's so true. And I think uh, if you have a look at the next... Um, slide here. Um, we've just sort of taken off, digress a little bit from the survey, but I think what's interesting, what's driving this adoption and use is, um, you know, Hollywood's a really good example of it's got people excited about uh, technology. And we've just got a little example here of where um, Hollywood, for example, has been showing through their futuristic movies some uh, 
uh, some visions of technology, but reality is really catching up with us. And uh, you can see there, like the um, Get Smart in 1962 with the smartphone. You know that was all the rage, and pe you know kids would love to have something like that. Well, in '73, Motorola came out with a very basic smartphone, but you know reality was catching up. I haven't put the phone in the shoe though yet. They have. Uh, well, not yet, but it's on the wrist. <laughs> it's on the wrist. Wrist, yeah, that's right. Um, but then you've got 2001: Space Odyssey, which was interesting, where you had HAL, the you know the talking computer that could actually control the spacecraft and so forth, and that has very similar parallels with um, Apple's Siri uh, mm -hmm. voice control tool. And probably Siri is much more functional and better than what How could ever do. And then you have uh, the Minority Report, where uh, you probably all remember Tom Cruise, uh, that particular scene where he was waving his hands over a, a single plane of glass. And what he was doing was commanding different information sources and also coming to conclusions from that information very quickly. And uh, today, um, that uh, is possible. There's, uh, I can control my TV with um, you know, hand motions. And also we can see um, also that uh, you know, different information can be pulled up from different databases through a single view. So that minority report um, vision that they had is, is very much alive today. Not too far off, hopefully, the moving holograms being into... You, you moved around and... Well, holograms, uh, I think it was uh, just a, a year ago we had a hologram uh, at one of the um, Telstra conferences where the um, chief technology officer yeah. was um, positioned on stage next to the CEO in, in a holographic manner. So it's all doable today. Technology is being implemented in reality, for sure. That's right. And if we come back to the, to the, to the uh, super user... Um, Basically, um, really what is the super user? Well, it's someone who really wants to adopt these technologies and also use them in the workforce. So um, the things that they're looking for um, is really seamless and integrated access to their information. They want to use the, you know, the single view of their data. They want to, you know, through their iPhone, a single view or, or on their desktop or laptop just to be able to have it all together grouped as one. Um, you know, they're also users that have very individual needs, so it's very important to actually tailor the information to their role, to what their daily activities is, so that they've become very productive with the information. So that single view has to be very specific to their needs. Um, in addition, um, the access to information has to be unbounded. You know, they can really need to access it anywhere at any time in a very secure format as well. So the super user is really looking for all these things that they do in their personal life effectively, but to bring it to the workforce. And this is where uh, organisations need to take advantage of this enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? People are just, they're using their technology all the time. So give them, enable them to, to use that in a more productive way, I guess, is the theme that I'm, I'm hearing. That's exactly right. And um, I've got a transition slide uh, you can see up here at the moment. But really, it's one thing for the super user to, you know, want these things. But the other thing is, how does the ID department bring all this together? Mm. And um, we've just got some guides here that, um, first of all, there's the enabler. Um, which um, you can see on your screen now. Uh, we feel that what's important is getting the networking communications right because cloud's only as good as the connection to the cloud service. So having access to you know, 4G, 4X, um, satellite fibre, whatever it is, uh, is really critical and that must be in a secure environment again. Mm -hmm. uh, that's absolutely important. And also the ability to have access to multiple cloud sources um, to enable the performance uh, to be uh, what the user is going to be expecting as well, and this comes back to the third. The second thing is, um, you know, the applications. Uh, the IT department must be looking at those applications that um, the users can uh, be familiar with and are, and are feel very comfortable uh, to use. Um, a lot of this is being driven by the consumer apps, apps that people see and use today. So we've got to take similar apps for the, uh, for the organisation. And lastly, what's important is um, the user themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important that they have a very seamless experience, uh, that they're using technology they're comfortable with, they're familiar with, they use every day because getting the user to adopt is very absolutely critical and sometimes the most difficult part of any IT implementation. Might jump to a question from the audience. Alex from New South Wales has asked us, what if we're not what you would call a super user? 
Um, does this affect how we might utilise these types of packages? Um, open that up to either of you. Have you got a, got a comment on that? Well, my thoughts are that um, generally if you look at our home life, uh, we're probably super users in ourselves, the way we use Facebook and, and Instagram um, and even um, uh, the way we communicate you know, with instant messaging or, or messaging. So uh, people have the potential to be super users and they often have the desire to take this technology to the workplace. So it's not a big leap to actually get them to use it in the workforce as long as it meets their expectations and uh, we can deliver on the functionality that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. okay, Eva? And I just think people are super users whether they think they are a super user or not, basically. I mean, you're a super user if you just access your email on your phone, I mean, at the end of the day. Or you're using email because email, as we'll see later on, can be your conduit for all these other applications that qualify you as a super user. So. Yeah. Very interesting. All right, let's move on to the on to the next slide. So, enabling your future. Look and look. This is uh, finally before we hand it on to Eva. But really, um, Telstra is in a fantastic position to help our customers and our businesses to uh, really leverage uh, the desire of users to to become super users. Um, we've got fantastic offerings around cloud. There's lots of choice. We have uh, the ability to offer cloud services from IBM. Uh, VMware, Microsoft, um, to name a few, as well as Cisco. Um, also, uh, the collaboration tools that we have available, uh, we'll be looking at Office 365 as a key one, but um, there's also lots of other, uh, Skype for Business, which is part of that, plus other tools and apps that we've got that make that whole um, user experience uh, really, really productive and easy. And lastly, um, we bring it all together through a fantastic network that we have around the country in terms of our communications network. Um, and that combined with our partners who can bring the expertise to the organisation. So you recall that one of the challenges that IT part departments had in, in implementing super user sort of uh, concepts to the organisation was the lack of resources and the lack of subject matter experts, where we've got amazing uh, partners such as C2C and others that can bring this expertise um, at an affordable way to our customers to be able to deploy this to them and get the full benefits out of it. Very good. We've got the questions rolling in, so thanks everyone that's uh, sending us in the questions. I'm going to ask one more before we jump into the next poll. Um, so Boy from New South Wales asked, there's so many apps and packages now, um, will integration be an issue moving forward? What are your thoughts on integration of these? Well, my thoughts are that uh, we have um, what's called the Telstra Marketplace, um, and we've actually looked at the integration component. And the apps available on our Telstra Marketplace um, do allow you to link into Active Directory, which is a key component of any integration. So um, we're considering that, and yes, um, you know, the apps do have that ability to integrate to a certain point. Uh, of course, there's other APIs, which is the application program or inter interfaces available from some apps, which allow you to integrate into um, various solutions. For instance, um, Box, which is a uh, file sharing tool, has APIs to integrate to salesforce.com, for example. Very good. Uh, we've got the next poll up now. So uh, everyone on the line, please tell us what your thoughts are on this poll. The question is, uh, where do you work? And you can tick all of them that apply to you. So in an office, on the road, sometimes at home, in a shop front, there's a few options there. Please tell us what you think. And, and we'll jump through in the question uh, to another question from the audience while you guys are answering that. So Syed asks, uh, is there any motivation for home users to switch to Office 365? I'll hand that to you, Eva, I think. Eva? Um, definitely, because the features in Office 365 for business, so the business plans in Office 365, have their feature sets specific to the small business straight through to the large enterprise, such as security features um, that the home office users just don't have access to. Excellent. Yep. Agree with that? Very good. Okay, so let's get our answers from the poll. Um, uh, very interesting. So in an office all the time, it was about 48%. On the road, an office, 39%. And sometimes from home, 59%. So obviously everyone could choose a couple of answers there. So we've got... That office uh, at, at home, at all the time, it was 49%, was it? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, office all the time, 48.6%. Yeah. Now, I think what's interesting with super users, very much those users are office bound, but they still, um, what actually did come out of that survey as well was the, the desire to access uh, work applications at home so that they could solve a problem quickly or access work email at home. So if something urgent came up, they could just solve it there and then and not have to worry about it the next day. Mm -hmm. So there's enormous productivity um, benefits for people that, not just the mobile workers, but for those workers that work in the office to have access when they want to have access. Absolutely, and I think when you're working in the office, um, you need access to so much information to be able to make decisions pretty quickly. And so you're a super user by just, you know, having access or requiring access from all these different sources, which we all do. So when you're in business, you need to access your email, you need to access the company for the corporate internet, um, and you need all of that really to be integrated, and that is a key requirement of, a, of the super user. That's right. So it doesn't really matter whether you're working from home or you are in the office all day. So. Yeah. And let's face it, we're all on our phones, particularly um, you know, around social media, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's always a phone in someone's hand. Yep. So, you know. I'm probably not the best case. I think I'm a super over-user. I'm on the, on, like, to and from, on the ferry from work, on buses all the time. I'm on the phone going, going hard at and it. You, so. see it yeah. you see it everywhere. Yeah, and everyone is. So why not make, uh, make that time productive for people? Yeah. Rather and than people want to do that too. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they want to do better at their jobs. Yeah. yeah. All right, so thank you very much, Richard. We're going to switch over to you now, Eva. Yeah. So everything Office 365, <laughs> it's a, quite a large, <laughs> broad topic. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to go through everything Office 365, but I'll be able to highlight, hopefully, some of the key features and some of the key benefits of Office 365. So here you're seeing a slide on essentially how Office 365 can elevate your business. And again, it goes back to the super user and the super user needing um, or having the requirement to have access to information regardless of where they are and to be productive if they are a mobile worker or they're working from home. Um, another key benefit of Office 365 and something that is there today in all of the solutions or all of the applications that Office 365 has to offer is the ability to really collaborate and, and work better together. Um, with Office 365, there's quite um, a lot of very um, specific um, security features that help businesses really protect their information. And back to what Richard was saying about the super user wanting to have un unbounded information. Yes. Um, with Office 365, a lot of the security using rights management services, or RMS, is enabled by the user themselves. So they have the ability to protect specific information, and that, infra or that security feature is in the hands of the actual user. So you can be more flexible about information, getting access to information, but also the user has more responsibility about securing that information with, with uh, features such as RMS and other features such as multi-factor authentication. And then the last thing um, with Office 365 and how it elevates your business is really it's constantly changing. Um, so it's not a static solution at all. Um, and therefore, if you make that leap and you move to Office 365, you can be ensured that it will grow with your business instead of um, remaining a static sort of solution as well as the fact that if you invest in the cloud and you move towards the cloud, it's a solution that you don't have to worry about upgrades. The upgrades are actually provided for you. So it's not a costly exercise to move to new solutions. That's it. There's actually four people in the uh, audience that asked us how uh, would 365 
assist them in their business. So, you know, productivity we've heard a lot about now. Yeah. That's, I think that individual approach to, the, to managing information is one that you probably wouldn't be immediately obvious, but giving uh, people some ownership of how they interact with software is pretty, pretty, a pretty powerful um, thing for, for people thinking about Office 365. Um, and, and the security issue, I think, is, is an interesting one. Well, I mean, it, it happens all the time. We email internally and externally information um, every single day. Um, so when you send an attachment in an email, how do you make sure that that information doesn't necessarily get forwarded to somebody else? And within Office 365, it's really easy for the end user to protect that information and make sure that that information doesn't get forwarded on or it stays within the corporate entity. Um, and yeah, it does put the onus a little bit more on the end user itself, um, but it therefore makes information more available and less restricted within the organization. And it takes the burden also off of the IT organization always to manage those security levels throughout the organization, which is really hard to do. Yeah. So I think that the, a, a common perception of Office 365 would start with Outlook um, yeah. being a bit of an anchor piece of software. So tell us, you know, how and why Office 365 is more than just Outlook. Yeah. So basically most in our experience, um, since we've been working with uh, customers moving to Office 365 what, since 2010, our experience has been that traditionally uh, the businesses or the customers that we look at, they're, they're wanting to offload their email, which for most businesses is very mission critical, and they just want to offload the email. And they see Office 365 as a really cost-effective solution just to, to host and get email off of their on-premise or something that they have to manage themselves. But Office 365, as you can see, is, is a lot more. And traditionally, you know, people look at Office 365 just as an email um, solution with Exchange Online. But it also provides your Office component and ensures that you're on the latest version of Office. So for all of those users that are currently on 2010, if they were on Office 365, they would be on the latest version, which is Office 2013 at the moment. It includes, you know, collaboration and document management with SharePoint Online, as well as Skype for Business, which used to be called Link. So those are the four, I guess, core solution areas of Office 365. But if you um, can see in, in the next um, slide, um, this is just a shot um, where I'm showing you my portal view and all of my applications that I have access to in Office 365. And um, specifically, you'll see that, okay, again, Office 365 is so much more than just email, but it even goes bef beyond those four key components of SharePoint Online, Skype for Business, Exchange Online, and your office applications, it introduces um, new applications such as Delve um, and even Office 365. What it enables you to do is have that single sign-on experience. So you can see here on this slide, I've got access through my Office 365 portal not only to my latest and greatest Microsoft applications, but I also have access to my business line cloud applications. So every Office 365 tenancy or solution comes with Active Directory embedded within it. And that gives me the ability to add applications outside of the Microsoft family, I guess you could say, and add other cloud applications. So here you can see in, in my Office 365 portal, I have access to Autotask Zero, which is our financial package. Um, and basically every business line application that we use. So I've got one view to access all of my information using Office 365. There's a, a lot more in there than email, isn't there? And, and we've got a question from Dave as well in the audience. Okay. We'll jump to He would like to know what it costs for Office 365 for, for a business. 
It, it depends. I mean, first of all, there's the license cost, and there's definitely um, multiple plans out there for Office 365. Microsoft sometimes doesn't make it easy. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different um, uh, packages or packaging of Office 365. Um, so there's buying your licenses, but then there's also working with an integrator to make sure that you're set up, you migrate your information to the cloud or to Office 365 um, effectively, and then the ongoing management and support for Office 365. So there's the professional services around that. So it's really hard to give one specific cost, but working with Telstra and partners such as CTC Online, we can work with you on figuring out what the right Office 365 plan is based on your business, and then also um, work with you on the specific professional services that you might need around it. So I know it doesn't specifically give you an exact price, but yeah, there's it's, it's a little bit hard. And I can just add to that, the um, Telstra Marketplace has Office 365 on there as, as apps, so um, if anyone goes to that marketplace, uh, they can see the licensing costs, uh, mm -hmm. but as Eva said, you've got the implementation and your other costs, but um, at least they'll be a starting point for them. And as yeah. is the trend with software as a service, it's per user per month, you know, it's very flexible and, and generally much uh, cheaper to set up than, than buying big packages of software in, in bulk, in, that has been the model previously. Pr prior Absolutely, to and I just, uh, the point that Eva made, uh, particularly about those 2010 users that were out there in our survey, um, the point that Eva made about not having to worry about an upgrade is absolutely important because all those users on the previous versions do have to work out, well, what are we going to do in 12 months' time about upgrading? And it's a, they've got to you know, budget that. They've got to worry about it. They're going to get complaints from users because they're not on the latest version. So I think it's really important that Office 365 takes all that worry away and it really is just a very simple solution with enormous functionality for organizations. Fantastic, so why don't we talk about Delve, Eva. Tell us about Delve. Yeah, so Delve is one of, um, it's a newer application, part of the Office 365 family of products. Um, and it is really, it meets that requirement of that super user. Um, so it's a new application where basically you get your information, um, how it, it follows you and how you work, I guess is the best way to explain it. Or a better way probably uh, to explain Delve is it's very similar to Facebook. So in Facebook, we get all of our personal information, updates on all our friends and family on a regular basis, either from our mobile view phone or on our computer, wherever we are on our tablet, and it's basically one view of what's going on in our personal life. Delve is that one view of what's going on in your work life. So you've got views of, um, of people or content that you've most recently worked on. Um, you've got the ability to access your email or even specifically the attachments to the most important email that are, related to projects that you're working on. So Delve really follows you in your work life and just makes it extremely easy for you to access information um, from multiple sources, essentially. And the greatest thing and the example that I wanted to give with Delve is, again, it's following, um, it's sort of fu future-proofing your organization because Microsoft is continually updating Office 365 Again, it's way more than just email, and if you are on that Office 365 platform, you're able to take advantage of all these great um, applications or new applications that are coming out. We've got two questions, one from Paul and one from Joanne. So thanks to you both for sending in these ones about loss and recovery of files. How does Office 365 deal with, um, like, formats and, and, and anything that might go wrong with your files and finding them again? Well, the great thing about Office 365, so it's a cloud-based platform, so it's sitting within the Microsoft cloud. So your information is constantly backed up. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's impossible to lose your information, 
But basically, it's certified, your information is certified and guaranteed by Microsoft. So it's sitting within the Microsoft hosted infrastructure. And that infrastructure is, when you buy Office 365, you're taking advantage of an infrastructure of, I think it's now up to eight different geo-redundant data centers around the world. So if your information happens to be sitting in one data center, let's say in Singapore or in Australia, and that something happens and goes wrong with that data center, immediately it's virtualized. So immediately, if something happens to your information, that information still exists with one of those other geo-redundant data centers around the world. Um, so if you can't find your information, um, again, it's a matter of um, working with partners, off cloud-based partners or Office 365 partners to help you. Your information's there, and there's definitely um, advanced search capabilities where we can help you find it, and it doesn't just get lost. I can tell you what, <laughs> I've, I've definitely experienced this in our business. Someone accidentally deletes a file. Yeah. There's version control, so you can go back and pretty easily go and find exactly. files like that. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Um, tell us a typical day with Office 365. Okay. What I wanted to try to communicate here was we talked about Delve and how Delve is sort of that single view to access um, information from various points within your organization. And it's a newer application, but also what I wanted to show was that Office 365 from the beginning pulled from or integrated all of the applications using an application that we all use day in and day out, which is Outlook. Um, so a typical day with Office 365 is really a typical day that most people have, which is that they are using, or their Outlook application is open, I would say 99% of the time on their computer. Um, and what I wanted to show um, was how you can access information from SharePoint, you can use Link, um, you can access your CRM applications, multiple applications, all from using that one interface, which is Out Outlook. And the reason why I wanted to specifically talk about this, and if you could just move through the transitions, yep. is that you know constantly what happens throughout the day, if you don't have an integrated solution, is you're sort of flipping between different applications to do different things. So if I'm in email, I'm using Outlook. If I want to do video conferencing, I'm using my video application. If I want to use my telephony, I'm using my IP telephony application. So I'm flipping between all these different applications. And as a user, what that does is it really increases the productivity loss that I have when I have to flip between all these applications. And I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but actually it really is a big deal and it can lead to up to 40% of productivity loss throughout your day once you have to flip through these applications. So by showing you Outlook, and if you go ahead and move to the next slide, um, you, can, you can see how you can really use Outlook um, as your hub. Um, and here in this example, um, we've got a situation where I've received an email, um, and it's an email actually from someone within Telstra. And at the top of that email, I can see um, who the email's from, obviously, which is standard. But I can also see the presence um, of that person, David's, um, availability. I can see his availability where it where you've got the green bar. And that availability and presence detection is actually using Skype for Business, which is integrated into your email. So someone sends me an email and immediately I can see his presence and availability. Um, and what's great about that is because email is not real time. So if someone sends me an email and I don't quite understand it or I want to talk to that person immediately about that email, if I can see their presence within the email itself, well, then I can actually um, 
um, know that I can communicate with that person right away. Um, so with Outlook and the integration, I literally just hover over David's picture in the email. It initiates my Skype for Business window, and then I'm in, um, instantly able to send um, David a message saying, yes, I really need to talk to you about this. Do you have time or when do you have time? And then David can instantly um, message me back. And again, I know that he's available because it's green. I can see his presence. So that's just one of the integration tools um, and how Outlook really can be your central hub, not just for email, but as your primary communi communications tool to, to work with and collaborate with um, people within your organization, or in this case, using Federation I was able to communicate with David, who is outside of my organization, so, which is fantastic. And then um, here's just another example of how you can use Outlook as your hub. Um, but in this case, I've synced um, important projects and document libraries from SharePoint. I've synced them to my Outlook. So I can pull up um, uh, actual files and documents directly from my Outlook instead of having to go into SharePoint to get those files. Um, so here you see an example where I've accessed a Visio drawing um, directly from my Outlook. Um, and again, it's just being able to use one interface to access my information from multiple sources. And the interface that everybody's using is Outlook. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows Outlook, so it's pretty easy. Excellent. Why don't we jump into one quick question from the audience? This is a pretty good one. We talked about data centers before. So, so uh, Mark asked, is Office 365 data kept in Australia? Yes, there is now a Office 365 data center in Australia. So, excellent. Um, and Samantha, let's do, let's do one more from Samantha. Thanks for your question. Hello. Um, do we need to buy a cloud space in terms of data sharing? So do, are they buying additional cloud space or uh, is there, I guess, reading into that question, is there a certain amount of data or already allowed data usage in the Office 365 package? Um, it, well, it depends on what, I guess, solution you're using. So each application has a certain amount of storage. So as an example, if you are using Exchange Online in Office 365, you get, it comes with a 50 gig mailbox, which is pretty massive. Um, most people would never get to that, that point. Um, but if you think that you would ever get to that point, there are unlimited mailboxes that um, you can have access to. And again, it just depends on the license that you choose. Um, and then for applications like SharePoint, it comes with a certain amount of storage, and then if you need more, you can buy more. So. Excellent. All right, so bringing it all together, let's talk to this last one here before we jump to the next poll. Yeah, this is just a um, summary of what we just talked about is that, you know, once, you know, if you use Outlook as your hub or you use Delve as your hub um, and you use that to access all your Office 365 applications, which there, again, is so many more applications other than just email. Um, you'll be much more productive in your, in your, work, in your working life. That's, Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to jump into the next poll, and I'm going to ask another question from the audience while everyone is um, answering this busily online. So uh, the poll is, how does your team work today? All in the office, a mix of office and field, or primarily in the field? So whilst you guys answer that, please jump on and tell us what you're, what you're thinking there. Um, let's answer a question from Alex. Interesting question. What's the minimum number of users that a business needs to justify switching to Office 365? One. Yes. <laughs> one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's, I mean, it, it's a solution, I think, that's really targeted towards the small to medium-sized business, but there's a lot of large enterprise and government that has have moved to Office 365 as well. So, and I think that's interesting if you use your federated example where um, Eva's company can see a Telstra employee online through the federation capability. If you're a small business, 
and you're dealing with larger organisations who've got Office 365, then you can have that better engagement with that business by leveraging that federation capability. So um, it's very important if you're a small consulting firm or just a, um, a small provider that um, it's good to have that capability if you get the opportunity to do it with your customers. Yeah, so every Office 365 business is federated, unless you don't want to be. Mm. So any business that's on Office 365 is instantly federated with another business. So it can immediately see the presence and availability, not just of the people within your business, but the people outside your business that are also on Office 365. You know, if you're an accountant, for example, you might want to be in regular contact with them, you know, during the busy periods or end of months. So uh, it's not just large customers, it's oh, also yeah. your service providers to your own business. So the immediacy of communication becomes significantly it, Exactly, and if you take that back to the personal life of the users, mm -hmm. you know, they're on Facebook and they can see who's available, when and where. Yep. So this is where it comes back to that that's super user, bringing it into that work environment. And that's why um, it's very easy to become a super user if you have the right tools mm. and capability. And back to why you would use, let's say, the business solutions over, let's say, just sticking with your um, personal solutions such as Facebook. I mean, if you're, the organization is not providing you with the business solutions and you start using your Facebook to measure messenger people um, related to work, you know, your work tasks, it's so unsecure or not very secure mm. um, and you're risking your business information by putting it out there on mediums such as Facebook or Skype for consumers um, with using those solutions or communicating using the business solutions you know it, it's got the inherent security uh, features to make make sure that the information that you're communicating is, is, is secure. And has the risk of just being slightly distracting as well, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> All right, let's look at the results of the poll. Um, so the, how does the team work today? 25.4% saying all in the office and 74.6% a mix of office in the field. So okay. that looks like there's lots of potential uh, super users on the line. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, all right, so we're going to look at a case study really quickly. Um, we're, we've only got about f just under 15 minutes left okay. until we're going to wrap up. So let's run through this case study now, BuildSpect. Okay, so this, this is one of our customers, and they are um, a leading um, building and an inspection and consulting firm um, providing expert reports and photographic en evidence for courts um, to rule in building disputes, basically. Um, they've got, you know, the challenge for BuildSpect was they've got a highly mobile workforce. Um, so most of their workforce are engineers that are out on site. Um, they need to instantly be able to collaborate on these reports that they provide um, as evidence in, in, in court. Um, and being that they're providing evidence in court, the reports have to be meet very high compliance standards or they had very high compliance requirements. So version control and backup were extremely important. And, you know, as far as timelines and deadlines, being able to collaborate quickly. So as soon as they were on site taking pictures, they needed to be able to collaborate um, and provide that information and work with people that were in the home office to be able to put these reports together quite quickly. Um, so that was basically their challenge. Um, and then if we're looking at their solution, or if you go back just one slide. Back to the one, yep. So they had SharePoint, OneDrive, and, and SharePoint Alerts and Skype for business. Yeah, for there we there. go. Yep. So the, the solution was basically using SharePoint. So with SharePoint, the information, that's where um, they were uploading their information using OneDrive and SharePoint. SharePoint basically made it very easy for, um, once the information was uploaded, instantly the home office staff were alerted that that information was there. 
Um, they got email alerts, um, so very quickly by using SharePoint and OneDrive, they knew it was there. And then using SharePoint, they were able to um, actually um, start collaborating together on that, those documents and working on those reports. Mm -hmm. So in, here's just an example of, you know, basically how they were actually using the solution, but literally using their tablets on site. They were dragging and dropping their information into their OneDrive. That was then um, synced to their SharePoint, which was then alerting the home office staff, oh, the information and the evidence is now ready. I can now start working with this person on the report. So that's just an example that shows you how, how um, BuildSpec were actually using SharePoint and Office 365. And then this is just an example of the compliance um, feature. Um, one of the key compliance fe um, features within SharePoint is version control, um, which is fantastic in SharePoint because essentially the system does all your ver versioning for you. So instantly when something's uploaded into SharePoint, there's a version associated with it. And I can see who has uploaded that document or made changes to that document. And then I still have access to all previous versions. So I can instantly you know, review the version history, but I can also say, well, what was in version two? And well, wait a second, some of the information that was in version two, I actually want to bring back to version four or five. And SharePoint gives you that ability to do that. And the system automatically tracks all the changes for any document that is sitting in SharePoint. So you can see how that becomes very important if you've got compliance requirements. Very good. OK, so moving on to the next one. So essentially, again, here's just an example of Working within SharePoint and, and accessing your documents from SharePoint, here's just an example of how I can work on a document with someone else remotely, and I can see where in that document they're making changes, and we can both be making changes and collaborating on that document in real time. And from that document using Skype for Business, I can also be instant messaging that person and, and say, oh, okay, um, don't worry about page one, I've got page one covered. Um, if you could work on this section of the document, and I'll, I'll work on this section of the document. So that's just an example. But that's literally how BuildSpec are, are using Office 365 and SharePoint so, um, to improve the productivity of their business. We've, I've seen many examples, and it's a bit scary the first time. You get like three or four people with collaborating on a document the first time, but then the, the amount of information that you can compact and get agreement on really quickly is... Yeah, it's very it's, efficient. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's massive. I mean, now it's almost like... Um, <clears throat> oh, well, yeah, I guess it depends on your age, but there, in my, based on how old I am, I do remember when there were no remote controls. And so it's... SharePoint and Skype for Business, honestly, I can't, I mean, I can remember what work life was like when I didn't have those tools, but it's analogous to not really being able to remember what life was like without a remote control for your TV. I can't imagine what my work life would be without having Skype for Business or without having SharePoint. It would be just too hard. <laughs> so, anyways, um, just to wrap it up, one of the key things, you know, like I said before, when we first started moving people to Office 365, the key interest was how do I get my email into the cloud? And again, really Office 365 is so much more than email, but the key thing is, is that you really need a partner or someone that can help you understand how all the different applications within the Office 365 suite can really have an impact on your business. So the key thing is taking advantage or being able to take advantage of more than just the email component of Office 365. And in our business, you know, over 80% of our customers are using more than just the email component and are actually using SharePoint. And most of our customers are using Skype for Business. And 
in order for them to do that, they really need the help of an experienced integrator to help support them through that whole process. Because again, it's, it is a process. It's not something that just happens overnight. Becoming that super user isn't mm -hmm. something that happens necessarily overnight. It's one thing to have the tools available. It's another one to actually have the knowledge and the inclination to use them um, it, other than all the other things that are available. Exactly. It's, it's, you need to understand how to use them and you need someone to explain it to you in terms of your own, of the way you work, not necessarily um, the instructions that Microsoft may give you on how this feature may work, but you need someone to explain it to you in, in terms of your own business. Absolutely. So we're just about to wrap up. So let's okay. talk to these ones quickly and then you'll, we'll do the one takeaway. Yeah. So this is just a summary slide again. Um, you know, you just, when you're moving to Office 365, ensure that you're really getting the most out of Office 365 and you're working with someone who understands all the capabilities of a Office 365 and that really can just apply that to your business specifically. And again, it goes back to that individual super user and understanding the individual user's requirements. Um, it's really important because there's so much within Office 365 and you can use it in so many different ways. Um, and then the last thing is, is Telstra is introducing uh, Onboard 365, which is basically those professional services that everyone really requires when they're buying Office 365. So those set up migration and ongoing management services. That's all being introduced through Onboard 365 and that's going to be on the Telstra Apps Marketplace. Okay. All right. Well, we are just about to wrap up. So okay. thank you guys very much for that. Now, before we go, thanks to everyone that's still listening in. Um, let's give us the, the one takeaway that you'd like to leave the audience with today, please. Richard, first. Yeah, look, thanks, Jeremy. Um, look, I think the most important thing that I could think of is that um, your employee has a desire to use these tools. They're using them at home. Give them the opportunity to use them in the workplace and take advantage of, the, uh, of our business partners to help you implement that successfully. And I think the rewards you'll get will be substantial out of it. Fantastic. And Eva, your one takeaway, please. I would say that the super user and the requirements or the solutions available for the super user are here today with Office 365. Those, that's, uh, you know, it's a pretty comprehensive cloud solution that's out there. It's, again, way more than just email. And it's not something that's in the future. It's here today and now. Fantastic. Well, Richard, Eva, thank you very much for joining us. It Thanks, was Jeremy. fantastic. No problem. Thank you. Everyone that was on the line today, thank you for coming. Um, stay on the line for the poll and... We will see you again at the next Telstra virtual event. I'm Jeremy Little. Hope to see you on the next one. Thank you very much.